Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I am Amalgam Ash. It's time for another devlog for codename Project D or Depraven. This time, we're going to be looking at the crafting system that I have integrated into the game. Last time, we looked at the NPC and quest sortation system. It's done. I just need to grab one of these NPCs, fill them full of notes and instructions, pair them with the quest giving NPC, and distribute them in a project file so that anybody can have a great way to set up their quest system for their game. Uh, but this time around, we're going to focus on this green rectangle right here within the confines are the crafting system elements. Now, I went over this stuff in another video that wasn't related to this project, kind of showing the installation of the crafting system itself and going over its features and showing you how to use it. That is more general, out of context knowledge where the, the, the stage is set for anybody to come in and learn how to use it. This is more as it applies to this project, but it is still very much uh, starting from almost the very beginning. So you can kind of watch this and get a sense of how this plugin works. This is Hagon's crafting system plugin. It is a paid plugin available on his itch.io page and it is worth every penny. It is awesome. I plan on doing a very short form tutorial for this soon, hopefully this week during Bakking Week. So let's dig into what this plugin actually does. We're going to hit test play and we are in my test bed map where everything is pretty much placeholder. Everything is here just to be tested. And if we walk, we've got two very, very simple events uh, that just give me items. I'm going to mine this stone. I'm going to mine these flowers. <laughs> and getting medical herbs and flowers and ore from the rocks. I actually didn't want a crafting system for Project D initially uh, because crafting systems to me, they are for improving your gear or creating consumables and also for creating things like furniture. And th there's just systems that I didn't see needing to be necessary in Project D because of its adventure game roots. However, I have seen a couple of examples of really good combat systems being made, uh, ABS systems for Bakken. And with a combat system does come a need to scale out the challenge and the balance. And with that comes the practical use of having a uh, crafting system. Uh, I am certain that I don't want classes in this game per se. So there won't be any crafting tied to any sort of class. It's going to be very elegant, simple crafting. And in fact, it'll be pretty close to perhaps Elden Ring's crafting system, where the only thing you need to do is worry about gathering the materials. If you pick up the recipe books necessary to know how to craft the item, you'll be able to craft the item. All right, so the system as it is is not perfect in the engine yet. Uh, at least not in my project, rather. The system is great. It facilitates exactly what I want to do. I just haven't got it to that point where it's perfect, uh, perfectly implemented in the game during runtime yet. So I don't have a template event, for example, to copy and paste. But I do have two crafting stations set up. Knife, spirit sword, spike shield. These are all things that I, I know how to make, but I don't have the items for the things that are grayed out. You can see the material requirements down here near the bottom. And by the way, the plugin makes this UI. This UI comes with Hagon's crafting system plugin. Everything that you need, that you could possibly need is here. You can see all of the stats that this item is going to give you. You can see all of the attribute resistances and strengths. You can see the amount of materials. You can see the price, whether or not it can be crafted, how many you already own. Not whether or not it can be crafted, how many you can craft. And if I, if I arrow up and I highlight the knife item, you can see that I can craft three. I have three out of one spirit stones of earth. So none of this is final for my game. I would actually like to make a, a lot of significant changes to the UI for my game, but the information that I need is all here already. And that makes this extremely useful and versatile. So I'm gonna grab this and say I'm gonna craft three knives. Okay, fantastic. Back in here, yeah, we've just got the three items that we can craft, but we do we can't actually craft them because we don't have the materials now, so I can escape that menu. I can go to my other crafting station, which is a table. Don't get too hung up on the graphics. The table is not final. Nothing here is final. Uh, this is a big kitchen table. This doesn't make for a very ideal or intuitive crafting station, you know? Uh, but if I had the right 
items. I could make a magical potion here. It's a drink that restores a lot of MP. It is quite sweet. Medical herb. I have three out of one, so I, I have enough medical herbs, but I just don't have any potions. So this is more or less how I would like my crafting system to be handled. I just, I just want it to be very simple. You go out and gather resources from nodes, and you bring them to stations, and you get books that'll help you along the way, and you'll learn just a little bit more. You might only learn one or two recipes per book, but they're not going to be anything too huge. Like, I'm, I'm just not wanting to scale this out to where it takes up the whole game. I just want, I just want buff items, uh, possibly debuffing items, and just, just a, a, a maybe one category of healing item, and that is it. Um, if I'm being inspired at all from Soulsborne crafting systems, then that's that's kind of the convention that I want to stick with. So, and then as far as gear goes, you won't be crafting. You won't actually be crafting any gear. Uh, but I might have you crafting certain items that are key items by using key materials. So materials that you get that are finite that you can't get rid of once you have them unless you use them to craft something and then you use the crafting station to craft that thing. So it's all story related, you know? But anyways, that's it. Let's take a look at the actual event panels behind these events. So these two, the rock and the flower, all they do is give you an item. That is it. The flower gives you a medical herb. You get a message that confirms it. That's it. The rock does the same thing, but it gives you ore. The table and the stove, which I'm I'm kind of using like a forge for this example, they house a few uh, assigned to string variables and event switch panels. The string variable that we're changing is called CS items to learn, and this variable is very very important cs items to learn and cs custom category both very important cs in this case means crafting system these two string variables are recognized by the crafting plugin itself and the switches are also recognized by the crafting plugin itself it recognizes two switches and you can name them whatever you want i named mine cs execute learning and cs open crafting the string variables will allow you to manipulate what it is your characters can craft in the game. And the event switches, once they are turned on, will open up the UI. Well, execute learning transfers the knowledge of the stuff that's in your that's in your string. Uh, but open crafting turns on the UI. So you don't have to worry about turning these switches off ever. Uh, because the plugin does that for you. The plugin handles the turning off of these switches. So once you turn on the UI and you're seeing the crafting UI in front of you, you close out of that, that switch will go back off automatically. And the plugin handles all of that. So the plugin is really, it's really reminiscent of like an RPG Maker plugin in that regard. Let's take a look at the stove because it actually does a little bit more. It utilizes all four of these variables. This is literally all I have for this item. That's it. We've got three values in the string items to learn, CS items to learn. It's 148 and zero. And these are actually item IDs, they're identifiers. I'll show you in the database what I mean by this. But if you want to learn all about this plugin front to back, I do already have a video about Hagon's uh, crafting system plugin. I install it. I go through a couple of hiccups. I actually ask Hagons while I'm recording the video uh, for some help on some stuff. And not only does he provide fantastic support, uh, he actually updates the plugin as well, right then and there. So this plugin's actually been updated since that video. But um, we can make item 148 and 0 with this station, and that is it. Uh, we can also make stuff that's in the weapons category. And I'll show you how to utilize that as well. So CS custom category and CS items to learn. Both things recognized by the plugin, like I said. And then these two switches get turned on. And that is it. That's all you got to do. Done. This this is now a fully functional crafting system. Uh, so let's go to the database now. And check this out. Database, this is all familiar to you. Um, except now down here in the management tags and notes, we have a few parameters. And you get to add these in. Your crafting system will give all of your items an ID. If you want to integrate the crafting system into your already existing game with your hundreds of items that you made, not just all this default stuff, 
but you've already made a ton of stuff, it is super easy to overlay the crafting system on top of everything you've done because it will automatically assign all of these guys their own ID. It'll do it in numerical order. So, and you can choose uh, whether or not to overwrite ones that have IDs or not. So you can put your own IDs on here and have it go ahead and generate IDs for the items you haven't generated IDs for yet. Or you can just do it all by hand. It's all up to you. Every can, almost just about every consideration has been made for this system for the user, so. So like Buckler here has an ID of 47 and it has an identifier of armor, that's its category. And if we go up to the knife, we can see that it has several parameters. Its ID is zero, which that zero is what we used in our event to assign to the string to say that we can we can make it. Uh, it belongs to category weapons. It is craftable. It requires materials 35 and one, uh, or rather, rather it requires one of item ID 35 to make. And its category, its category is weapons. This, uh, this has a different function than the one up here. We'll, uh, we'll go over that another time. Or you can go check out the video that I already made that hopefully can explain all of this a little bit better. Uh, but so just to just a touch on this, this item is craftable. The materials 35 colon one, it means that we need quantity of one of item ID 35. Item ID 35 is the spirit stone of earth. There it is, ID 35, uh, hashtag consumables. We just need one of these to make the knife. We have the spirit sword and that requires four of item ID 35. And then you can do where you require multiple materials to make one item as well. It's like this magical potion. It requires one of item ID two and one of item ID three, which means that it requires one medical herb and one potion. So these mats, they don't need to have anything specifically on them, just the ID and then you're good to go. And then the item that you want to craft has got to have uh, the fact that it's craftable and exactly what mats it takes. And then, like I said, what its ID is, where it shows up whenever you specify item categories. So that is it for the, um, just showing you where, oh God, showing you how far I've come with the system so far. I haven't come very far with it. I've really just got it to work. Like I just integrated it into the project. So, so right now that's the extent of the devlog. Uh, last time, we showed off a little bit of the map that I had commissioned from Siler Dean this time. And in the next couple of videos, while I'm being a little more productive with functionality, I'll, I'll, I'll keep those more of a surprise and I'll, I'll probably go a little bit slower with the map reveals. For now, I hope that you enjoyed seeing the current progress in the next video. I think we'll tweak a lot of this and we'll set it up to perform more tests to kind of see uh, if, if we can make sure that the player can learn uh, from events and then maintain that knowledge so it's not being overwritten. Uh, one of the things that I should point out is this items to learn string can, if it can, it can be overwritten and if you overwrite it that's going to make you forget absolutely anything that you have learned other than what's being presented right here in the string. You could add to end but um, this, this, is, uh, this is situational. Right now I don't really want this to be overwritten every time you visit a new station but I want each station to have its own function, its own purpose. And I would like you to be able to craft a lot of items out in the wild too, when you're not around any sort of station. So what I, what I really want to do here, I think is play with two variables, uh, as, as CS, all items learned variable, and then try to find a way to transfer just a portion of that to here, or we'll maintain the items to learn variable by adding to it using recipe books and we'll never overwrite the contents of it at all and you'll be able to look at all of the current things that you do know how to make. Uh, the only thing is we'll have to make sure that we really utilize the custom categories whenever we are at these different stations. Okay, yeah, and that's, so that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Sorry for the shorter devlog, I'm feeling unwell. 
uh, not too unwell to, to, to develop, but probably too unwell to make a more entertaining or exciting or energetic presentation. Uh, for now, we'll leave this here. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you'll consider checking out Project D, especially when it gets further along in development, and I'll see you in the next video. Happy Bucking Week for the channel. Bye for now.